if you write down in terms of matrix, how here you have how x s x y x d. Multiplied by mere. 
you can represent meter here as meter squared multiplied by meter. Meter squared here is the area, right? If I write down area to be perpendicular to this direction, this is represented by this meter squared. And you multiply by the distance here. This meter here is a distance along this direction. Okay? So the momentum for this volume can be represented by root V. Agree? Now, if I multiply by another meter, this meter, if it has the same direction as this, this line, this direction, it would cancel this dimension out, leaving only um, the area perpendicular to this direction. See, you have meter, you have meter cube. This meter cube can be split into meter square and meter. This meter here, going along the direction of the flow. This one and that one can be canceled out as long as it's going in the same direction. Okay. If I intend to cancel this one out, I need to multiply by another entity with the unit going meter in this the same direction. Right? So that I will have only the area perpendicular to this momentum flux left. Because by definition, momentum flux is supposed to be momentum per area perpendicular to that flux per time. So I cancel this one out, leaving on this only this area. By doing so, I need to multiply by this meter. And also, I need time, because flux requires time. So I have to divide by time. So if you consider a meter in this direction, divided by time, that's the loss. That's the result why we need to add another variance. Okay? But again, the whole momentum flux here, consider the fluid, the whole fluid, to move as a whole. Inside this box of the volume, we do not think that velocity are different. We take the whole volume to have the same velocity. Okay? That's why we say that this one is convective transport. Alright? Now, as I said from the very beginning, what we like in this course is to derive our velocity profile. We want to see how the velocity are differentiated inside a system. Let's say I have a pipe. You know that inside a pipe, velocity at different positions are not the, are not the same. In the center, velocity is the highest. Near the wall, the velocity is lower. So there will be velocity profile. In order to find out exact velocity profile, in this course, we undertake micro microscopic approach. The term microscopic approach means we need to divide our system into small pieces and then take a balance of momentum transport around that small pieces. After that, we can integrate our small pieces to cover the whole system. Okay? So our small pieces there in this book is called shell. So we have to divide our system into small parts. This is called shell. This small part is called shell. And then the next step is when you divide the whole system into small shell like this, we are going to assume that everything inside the shell is supposed to be the same. That means within the cell within the shell itself, velocity are uniform. So even though velocity for the whole system change with respect to position, but velocity in the shell here remains uniform. So you can imagine that if I split the system into tiny, tiny cells like this, 
the tinier, the smaller the shell, the better the result, right? If you divide the whole system into only two parts, there is no way that you can assume that each part would have the same velocity equivalent. So it will be true only if you divide into very, very small shell. So the shell here is supposed to have size approaching zero. Okay? So if I say that, suppose this is y direction. This is x direction path. We have to say that our shell here is supposed to have width of thickness here small enough. I'm going to say delta y and delta x, for example. And this one will be taken to be approaching zero layer. Alright? Now, the key point is everything inside the shell must be uniform. Velocity must be uniform. Temperature must be uniform. Concentration must be uniform as well. Then, we will check and balance. Because you know that earlier we say that whenever you, wherever you have high velocity, there will be momentum transfer from high velocity to low velocity point. So here the velocity is higher, so therefore there will be momentum transfer from high velocity to lower velocity. Right? In that case, if you look into transport itself, there will be transport of momentum into the shell and going out from the shell. The balance of momentum in and out from the shell can be written as an equation. We call this one momentum balance. Just like in mass or energy balance, you consider a system boundaries and you take anything going in and anything going out, take a balance. Right? Equation from momentum balance looks something like this. You have in minus out plus generation equal to accumulation. Same thing, exactly same thing as what you have done for mass and energy. 